Welcome back to Awareness TV, Antonio T. Smith Jr. <laughs> Best audience alive. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We're going to talk about the third cure for a lean purse or in common vernacular, the third cure to stop being broke. Yes, we don't want to be broke. Yeah. When you were in, yes, okay. yeah. <laughs> when you were in kindergarten and the teacher said, what do you want to be when you grow up? You went, I want to be broke. No, of course you didn't. Of course you didn't. <laughs> no, it's all right. Of course you didn't do that. <laughs> you, I want to be rich. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police. But you didn't say, I want to be broke with bad credit and a bad dad. I want to give my kids, as a mom, low self-esteem. That's not what you did. That's not what you did. You didn't do that at all. The third cure for being broke or a lean person is to make your gold multiply. Now, we had a question from last episode where we were talking about rules. We're going to bring back up these rules. And I'm going to teach you how to make your gold multiply. Now, come on up. We'll bring her on camera. And then she's going to ask your question. My question about not following the rules. Yes. How do you do that without pissing people off? Yep. Without hurting someone's feelings? Yep. Without offending somebody? Okay. This is a great question. This is a great question. Come on, let's clap for it. That's a great question. This is nice. No, genuine. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep, okay. Good. That's genuine. Is everybody ready for this answer? <laughs> Whose rule are you following when you're offended because you lived your life? You see, listen to the heart of the question. How do you make sure that you are not pissing people off when you decide not to follow their rules of oppression? Who taught you that? Rules come in all forms, all shapes, all sizes, <coughs> all cultures. You don't even realize you're following rules. But who taught you? Who taught you that when you don't do something someone wants, they will get mad? System. You learned it from your parents. They first got mad at you when you didn't listen as a one year old. That makes sense to you? The doctor. The doctor? When he first came out, he was like, oh, oh, he didn't cry, so. Oh, yeah, let's smack him on the buttocks. <laughs> Friends, Friends teachers, yourself. peers, yourself. Well, see, if you didn't teach yourself, but you're right. You're more right than anybody else. But after you were taught, <laughs> you made a meaning out of it yourself. Uh, yeah. And you kept going. And you said, you know what? When I love me, they don't like that. I must not be good enough. Something's wrong with me. And the next time you went into a relationship, you went in that relationship with something wrong with you. And then when you bumped up against what hurt you in the first place, you walked again and something was wrong with you. And now you only date people that validate something being wrong with you. You have to understand that everything, I mean, here's your brain. There's a brain stem. In your brain, 98% of what you think comes from someone else. I'll give you a great example of this. When I decided I didn't want to be broke anymore, the first thing I had to do was, this is my dispel, let's, let's, just, let's, let's bring the vernacular down, the, the diction down. This is my throwaway list. I had to first recognize, oh, I'm broke. Man, why did I have to recognize I was broke? Look, look, think about what I'm saying here. I had to recognize I was broke. Wasn't it obvious that I was broke? 
Did not the data say that I was broke? But my parents said, so parents, okay, I just put par. Parents said, don't you let them see you broke. Put on some good clothes. Act like, look like you, look like you want something. Put on some clean drawers in case the ambulance comes. That's it. You never know what's gonna happen. Now, is that bad advice? But what happened is they taught me how to look better than I actually was. They didn't say put on some clean underwear after you properly take hygiene seriously and you make sure you're good and change those underwear every day because we can afford to buy lots of underwear. They said, no, change your underwear even if you're dirty. And I said, well, because as kids, oh, let me keep this up here. As kids, we love our parents. We idolize them. They can't be wrong, so I'm wrong. They're not wrong. I am. I, I shouldn't be clean. I should look like I'm clean. And what do you do with that information? You say, okay, apply that everywhere. I'm broke, but I'm gonna look like I'm not. That bank account says negative 343, but this car clean. And then we spiritualize it. Well, I got to take care of what the Lord has given me. You know what? He gave you your bank account too. You're not taking care of that. Okay. So I had to dispel all the teachings of my parents. It's not that they horned me. They didn't horn me. They did the best they could with what they had. But everything I knew about money came from them. Let's see if you can finish a few of these phrases. Money don't grow on trees. Okay, I finished the phrase. Money don't grow on trees. Who do you think I am? The bank. <laughs> when we get in this store. Don't you ask for nothing. Come on. Come, come on. We got the same power. Right? Yeah. Think about this. <laughs> they, <laughs> I can't buy that. We can't afford it. Come on. There's no way that you should be able to finish these sentences. Our parents taught us how to be average and mediocre. They didn't try to, but they were average. They were mediocre. They did the best they could with what they had and we love them for it but if you want to be rich or have money at your disposal or not swipe your card at walmart and pray for it come on who 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 know what i'm talking about who know what i'm talking about oh please please let it go please don't embarrass me in this line i don't have no time for this don't you embarrass oh thank you thank you thank you all right i went through come on who, who, who know what i'm talking about <laughs> <And then> we, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take this one out in the car. I checked my back. Man, I should have really checked it. I should have checked. Whoo! And you swipe it and get the client. Man, why are you so loud? You don't got to tell me my stuff is declining that loud. You get it, right? Now, so what happens is I had to dismiss my parents. Then, after the parents, I had to dismiss my. Community. Because you know what? Yes. Come on. How did you dismiss this way? Ah, that's a good question. I have a good answer for you, too. Thank you. But hold on. Stay right here. I'm going to ask you a question while you're on camera, okay? Because okay. I feel your energy. <laughs> I can feel your energy, okay? Can y'all feel the energy? Yes. She was dead serious with that question. They... Your parents can be wrong and still be your superhero. Okay. Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> Let me say it a different way. 
We think, and you're not going to like this one, but it's the truth. We think when we make them wrong, we hate them. We think we love them less when we make them wrong. Come on, be honest. Right? We think we love them less when we make them wrong. No, wrong is just wrong. There is no such thing as wrong in the first place, but I got to go to that another episode. It's another episode. I have to come to that later. There is no such thing as wrong. There is no such thing as right. But that I've got to just come. We're coming back to that. We're coming back to that. Just throw stones at me for right now until we come back to it. Your parents taught you incorrectly. They taught you the opposite of prosperity. And guess what? You don't love them less because you reject their teachings. Is everybody hearing this? You don't love them less because you reject their teachings. Rejecting their teachings is not the same as rejecting them. Your parents would be more proud of you should you reject their teachings, find your own, and stand by your ground and still honor them. They'll say, I'm so proud of you, baby. You know, you found your own way. All parents want our children to find their own way. We just try to control them and give them that way because we know what's best for them. My community said, <laughs> hey, you know how we do it in this hood? You know how we, you know what it look like. You know what money look like. Who, who, which one of you are sneaker heads? Who like sneakers? Okay, got, got the young man right there, like sneakers. Now, who taught you that? Your community did. You didn't grow up saying, Mom, sneakers, now. Nope. You got made fun of because of your shoes. And then, <laughs> see, <he's on> a, <laughs> you got made fun of because of your shoes. And then all of a sudden, they said, you know what? Those shoes suck. And he was like, Mom, I don't want to go back no, no more and have them talk about me and my shoes. Right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. I don't want to do that. So your community then teaches the way you belong in money. Yes. I just want to make a comment. I don't care what anybody says. Kids was the ones to go. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> with no Nike and no uh, uh, Okay. Kids. Okay. Kids. <laughs> but that somebody taught her, you don't need what everybody else get. These is just fine. Okay. Because Nike is a better engineered shoe by far. They use serious size for their shoe, okay? <laughs> serious size. See, somebody taught her, hey, average is good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can hear your teachings every time you talk. You can hear your teachings every time you talk. Okay. Parents, community. Oh, sis, I had to do all this to make money. I had to get rid of what my parents said. I had to get rid of what my community said. Then I had to get rid of you're not going to like this one. What my church said about money. What's the, what profit the man to gain the whole world? Oh, look at that. You can finish that one too. And lose his soul. Scare me. How many of you right now know people or you're one of these people that you think if you get rich, you're going to mess it up. Or if you get rich, you become an evil person. Or if you get rich, people will look at you like an evil person. Yep, see? I was that way. He was out, yeah, see? I was afraid. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, he was afraid. I was afraid to actually make money. You're like, afraid of your birthright. Mm -hmm. And you now serve a deity that says, I love you so much, stay broke. I don't want you to financially take care of your family and your children. No. If you're going to be loyal to me, Stay broke. Think about that. Now, parents, community, church. Whew. Then, my school then taught me where I belong in money. And they said, go to school. What comes next? When you get older, you need to go to school and get 
a good oh, job. Okay, yeah. <laughs> She's in the suburbs. Go to school to get married. You did. But think about that teacher for a moment. I'm gonna think about that teacher for a moment, though. She actually, well, she didn't accident. She said, married. Women, in fact, I'm gonna race all this. The fifth one is then I had to take the nation. America told me where I belong in money. You get so much. But since you dark skinned, you're gonna have to work twice as hard and get twice as less. I had to dispel that too. Okay, that was number five. Number five was my nation. Twice as less. We just want to make sure they heard. Twice as less. Yes, ma'am. So, Michelle just brought. Come on, come on. You gonna, she's gonna be long. Michelle just brought up a good point. Mm -hmm. Not only is it the color of the skin, but you're gonna have to work twice as hard to get twice as less. And get ten times less notification if you have a pair of boots. Okay, that's why I drew a woman here. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> that's your woman. Yes. <laughs> Ain't she fine? <laughs> Look at her fine self. <laughs> she fine too. Look at her. She got that. Yeah, she fine. That's that's hers too. That's hers. That's hers too. That's hers. Yeah, that's hers. That's hers. Okay. Now this woman, that's why I drew a woman. I want you to think about a couple of things. Think about two things here. Women are taught to be pretty, mm -hmm. be passive, mm -hmm. be innocent, be pure, be quiet, so a good man will marry you and take care of you. Let me know where I've erred. Let me, from birth, you're taught, don't, women, uh -uh, that's not ladylike. We don't do that. We don't do this. No, stay this way. Why? Because you want some man to marry you as if you cannot take care of yourself. Where does that come from? Come from the ancient world to where women were not allowed to make money. They were not allowed to get jobs. Well, they didn't have jobs back then. They were not allowed to be swordsmiths and wordsmiths and philosophers. So you had to have a lot of children because that was a woman's wealth long hair because that was a woman's glory and a husband because that was a woman's income mm. that's all facts this this so I, I i got these degrees for something right that's, that's all facts this is this is what it is so women are taught in order to be a queen be pure so Tarzan can validate you. That's you following rules. <laughs> now, let me tell you about America real quick, and then I'll tell you how to flip your income. Okay? You're not going to like what I'm going to say. So I won't even write it on the board. I won't even write it on the board. I'm just going to give it to you. So you can understand how messed up our thinking is. For one, according to science, there ain't no races. It's just us. Human race is the race. According to science. White people still have to obey universal laws. Oh, you white, water doesn't go. You can breathe in me. It's cool. No, you're the superior race. Breathe. Breathe in water. No, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. It's not. Oh, you black. I'm going to be mean to you, said water. What? No. The universal laws or relativity from Einstein doesn't care. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's something we made up about 400 years ago to justify winning and we establish rules so we don't lose it and by we I'm obviously not talking about me okay now in America you know what I can't help myself <laughs> the black man put black and blue 
had the right to vote before or over the white woman. Now, universally, this, this, is, this shouldn't even exist. This conversation shouldn't even exist. But I want you to understand the thinking that you are rules to the people in power sleep with women. They respect less than people they oppress. That's data. That's data. This is awareness TV. You can say what I want. This is data. Yes, sir. right because it's called heg well you're going to make me do it it's called hegelianism george hegel um, i think i can spell his name right was a philosopher that said there's no such thing it's right or wrong there's a thesis and an antithesis okay he says there's a thesis And then the antithesis or antithesis, okay? The anti and then thesis, okay? Neither of these win. The thesis will go across. The thesis will come across and people will agree with this thesis for a long time. And then someone will say, I don't want that. And then the antithesis will then appear. The antithesis will then appear. Then when it appears, they clash. Go to war. Neither side wins. The new thing becomes a sin thesis. Synthesis. Synthesis. Sin means same. Thesis, opposite thesis, will merge the two ideas together. I'll give you a great example. Since I brought up black and white, racism, not racism, slavery is cool. No, it's not. Synthesis, Jim Crow. We abolish slavery, but we'll come up with a new thing. And that lasted for a long time until... You begin another thesis out of this. And then the antithesis will come in the same thing. A continuous cycle. So George Hegel says, and with the psychology of man, I am inclined to believe such thing. Okay? Now, something I would like to show thee. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Here is how you can flip your money. When you multiply your gold, now watch this here. When you multiply your gold, you have one bar of gold. You're focused on one bar, okay? Now, it is far harder to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or put a zero. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, uh, or add one more zero. Hundred. Now I'm showing you something here. I'm showing you how poor people think, how rich people think. Okay. Rich people spend their time. Figuring out how to add an extra zero. The rules say you need to count one by one. One by one by one by one. Count, 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 count. Make each one count. Make each one count. Take all those steps. Their focus on multiplying the zero. Now, why does that make a difference? Why does this make sense? 
it makes sense because of this simple reason. Same amount of energy. This will take the same amount of energy. If anything, it'll take less energy to put a zero than it will to do all that counting. To get to one, the number, whole number one, to one million will leave you 999,000 to go. Or you add six zeros. Then what you do is you change your thinking to say, now what can I do to add six zeros? And you start thinking bigger. If you want to multiply your income, find a vehicle that lets you add a zero. Don't find a vehicle that lets you one by one makes you take all that time. Yes, sir. Quick question. Yes, sir. So once I find Come on that, camera. Because you got a you got a nice question. So once I find that zero, mm -hmm. now do I focus on that zero? and not focus on the ones, or the zero will be the main goal. Okay, fair enough. Zero is a number. I want to say, you, you can go off. I want to say the Arabics. It's an empty set. It was just a placeholder. Zero is just a placeholder. Yeah, don't spiritualize zero. It's a placeholder. It doesn't exist. It's a placeholder. You just, what you're trying to do a better way to say it, no, your question was actually profound because it made me say what I'm about to say now. You're simply trying to add zeros for one reason. It's a placeholder that moves your comma. I like that. It's the only reason you try to add zeros. So you can move the comma. That's it. So I'm glad your question. Your question was profound because it made me make this simple. Do you see how simple it is? When you think in simplicity, that becomes duplicatable. It becomes exciting. And then you, through thing, you, you wake up and go, you know what? That made me happy. And you have more energy to move placeholders. Have you ever tried to walk a mile? Walked in and thought about every step. How quickly did you get defeated? <laughs> or did you walk 10 miles, put on some headphones if you had that? Or you thought about the journey and not the process? Should you desire to multiply your income, focus on the end goal, not the process. You've been watching Awareness TV, Antonio T. Smith Jr. You can't plan better, you can dominate. <laughs>